Now let's dive into why the Meraki is in the mix. When we think about the Meraki, you know, at our average branch location or office location, we're wanting a device that gives us complete control of our users' bandwidth, insight into the network, and insight into our customers' uh, experience and use within our network. The Meraki provides all of that functionality and more. So this device, which is a device we commonly use for retail locations, is integrated wireless. It has two WAN ports, the ability to take in and aggregate, which we talked about a lot today, two different ISPs. And it has an internal cellular modem for failover and gives us out-of-band management no matter where this device is. So we'll dive into the portal. At a glance, through the portal, you're able to see all of your different Meraki's out in the field. You can see all your branches labeled by branch location. So in this case, a bunch of lab devices that we have. We can see status of our ports. We can drill into port statistics. And this device has two integrated PoE ports, which is what was actually powering this phone. It can also be used to power some access points deeper into our building. We can see our WAN 1, our WAN 2 IP address, and that our cellular is integrated and ready. Connectivity status, current throughput on both of our links. From the same dashboard for all sites, we can access our security center. So the Meraki is a very powerful security device and firewall. It has both IPS and IDS firewalls, so it's doing inline virus scanning and inline protection of our network and retrospective protection. What that means is if after the fact, uh, you know, there's a new threat that's identified and it's already invaded your network, the Meraki is actually able to see all of the devices that were infected historically uh, by comparing the block level traffic. So on this device, obviously there's no events because it's a lab device. Next, we'll dive into the SD-WAN and traffic shaping. So here we can see the, the speed of our current WAN2, WAN1 links. We can see uh, how we're gonna utilize those links. So right now we're set up to use a primary link and then fail our traffic. We can also tell it to load balance. So when we think about load balancing, it's, it's balancing your users across the two different links and it's balancing based on applications. So we can actually set some quas and, and say, you know, if we know we have a fiber on WAN1 but a lower quality link on WAN2, we can make sure our voice traffic primarily goes out WAN1 and our WAN2 link, you know, which might be a big commodity broadband, is used for our public Wi-Fi. Um, we can set some really, really intuitive uh, traffic shaping policies, and this is one of the most powerful parts of the Meraki. So we can drill in by application because it's doing deep packet inspection of all of the traffic, and we can say, you know, we want to limit uh, on a per user basis by default. You know, maybe we only want to give all of our users 50 megabits, but to enable a good experience, we want to allow for a burst of speed initially, so that you know, if it's a small download, it happens instantaneously. But if it's torrent traffic or video, it's shaped down to whatever we want to set. And we can set that for both the upload and the download. We can also then go deeper on an application basis. So by default, we're optimizing for SIP, you know, uh, WebEx, Skype, and video services. But then, you know, maybe we don't want to allow our users to have um, really, really fast connections and use a lot of our bandwidth for social, for video and music, for things like Netflix and YouTube. And that's where we can do that here. So we can actually add across the whole network based on all these different categories. So peer-to-peer, -peer, let's take peer-to-peer. -peer. Now, all peer-to-peer -peer networks, we, we do not want peer-to-peer -to, -peer to be able to use more than two megabits. And we want the priority on the network to be low and we're not gonna tag it. And so now you can see all social and photo sharing, all video and music, and speed tests, I'm going to go ahead and limit to two megabits to protect my network. So the real power of that is, you know, most of these solutions are to solve for some problem. Typically I need more bandwidth, I need to change, you know, what layer I'm on on the OSI model, or, or I need to make certain applications more performant across my network, the things I truly care about. And that's what the Meraki lets you do. Make sure your voice and video calls are perfect, 
make sure the user experience is good for the things it needs to be good for, and shape down all the things that it's not good for.